Hello, readers. It's February, so I am filming a lot of content in the next couple of days for the end of the month in January and the start of February, so stay tuned for that. But today will be my January book haul. I got a couple of audiobooks, a couple of ARCs from NetGalley, and a few hardcover books as well. I used some Christmas money to get some of the hardcover books that I chose. And actually Lisa and I chose uh, two of them together. So that was fun. And so let's get started. I featured this one before and it's Shrines of Gaiety by Kate Atkinson. I love Kate Atkinson. I love the way she writes. I love the topics and the eras that she chooses. I just really enjoy everything I've ever read by Kate Atkinson. Some of them are very complex, as in Life After Life and A God in Ruins, and some of them are a lot easier. They're just kind of linear and and more, I guess, what you would expect. I don't really care. What I love about this, though, is that it is, it's a female character, uh, main character. Her name is Nellie Coker, and it's 1926. England recovering from the Great War. She is the owner of a nightclub, and I guess some things happen there that threaten her, you know, her well being and her safety, and maybe uh, some other things are occurring, maybe some undercover crime kinds of things. I don't know, but I don't want to know too much about it. I just love this cover. So that also is something that is drawing me to read this uh, sooner maybe than later. We'll see. The next one I picked up, Lisa and I both agreed this was something we wanted to read because Lisa actually went to college with Andy Davidson's wife. She went to Ole Miss with her to the University of Mississippi. So she's read another novel by this author called In the Valley of the Sun. I have it on my Kindle. I have not read it, but this one has been an anticipated read for me for a while, ever since I heard about it. So The Hollow Kind by Andy Davidson features a character named Nellie Gardner, who inherits a turpentine estate from her long lost grandfather. I guess they've been estranged. And she immediately goes to Georgia to with her son, Max, to see what, you know, what this is and what it looks like and what the possibilities are. So it's an estate that was owned by August Redfern and it's decrepit and in, you know, kind of disarray and she sees it as a safe place to hide from her violent husband and a refuge and she sees it as an opportunity and her son max sees some things that are wrong with redfern hill so horror um nice kind of illustrated map on the cover apparently redfern hill 1919 so there's uh it's described as a gothic novel which i love and yeah i think this one would be fun to read anytime this year but it might get bumped up for me because i've been anticipating it for a while and the last one we got with the christmas gift card was stay awake by megan golden i've read another by megan golden i liked it i read the night swim and I think there's another one called The Escape Room that I did not read yet, but Megan Golden is an Australian author, and this one follows a woman who wakes up in the back of a cab, and she has some disconnected, dissociated memory of what has happened to lead her to be in the back of this cab. She gets out at her apartment and she enters her apartment and there's a man in her apartment that she doesn't know who claims that this is his apartment and not hers. And she looks down and I think it's on her palm or somewhere on her body is written the words, stay awake. A great thriller, a great plot line. I don't really want to know anything else about it except for that. It's, it's just so stunning in it's uh, in this cover. I love this cover a lot. <laughs> This is really also what kind of drew me to it, the plot and the description of it, as well as this cover. Another thriller, I was really into thriller purchasing in January that I got was is Runtime by Catherine 
Ryan Howard. This is the heaviest book, and I cannot for the life of me figure out, it must just be the weight of the paper, because it, it just is so much heavier than the ones I've just shared with you. This one looks to be about 373 or 75 pages or so. It's hard to say because it has some, you know, it has the regular like storyline and then it has a script, I think, inside of it. But this is about a movie that's being filmed. It's called Final Run, Final Draft. The movie is called Final Draft, and it's a horror movie, and a soap opera actress is chosen to star in the movie, and the problem is that some things start to go wrong. I like this cover, too. It's really kind of clever. I read 56 Days. I read it in 2021. I think it was rated pretty highly at that time and people were talking about it and I liked it a lot. It was a pandemic book. So a lot of people didn't want to read it because they were tired of the pandemic, you know, in 2021, still a little bit fatigued by that trauma, but I really did enjoy 56 days and the plot of this one sounded unique and someone talked about it on booktube. It may have been um, Audrey at chapters and converse. So I was led to give it a shot. And I think I'll like it. My book of the month club pick for January was Age of Vice. Like, look at the size of this and look at the size of this. And this is like significantly heavier. Somebody tell me why. It must be the weight of the paper. Anyway, Age of Vice by Deepti Kapoor. This one got my attention right away. And I was in the car when the book of the month club picks for January dropped and I read this description. At first I was thinking I was going to skip January. And then I looked at it again and I read this description to Lisa and I said, does that sound like something you would like to read too? And she said, yeah, I, it does. New Delhi, a Mercedes jumps the curb, a wreck happens and there's a man in the car and people swear that he was not the person who was driving when the wreck occurred. He's shell shocked. He doesn't know what happened. Then this all kind of evolves with this Wadia family who sounds kind of like a mobster kind of family. So it follows their parties, their business deals, their, um, political influence they're possibly doing some underhanded things and it and it also follows ajay who's the servant that ended up in the car blaming you know him for the accident it follows sunny who is the playboy of the family who's trying to kind of rise above the influence his dad has had on the family business and nita or Nada, who is the journalist caught between morality and desire. Sounds great. So Age of Vice is uh, a popular pick right now, I would say. I see a lot of people talking about it, a lot of people adding it to their TBRs or to their um, currently reading list. So I'll get to that <laughs> as soon as I can. I'll get to that. All right, then I hauled two audiobooks on Libro. I had several credits and I actually paused Libro for a bit because I was kind of stacking them up and not getting to them. So I hauled Secluded Cabin Sleep Six by Lisa Unger, which I did read and finish. So stay tuned for my wrap up of what I read in January. And the same is true for Mad Honey by Jody Paco and Jennifer Finley. What is her name? Let me not tell you the wrong name. Jennifer Finley Boylan. So it's co-written by the two of them. Let me say, I'm going to tell you more about these when I do my wrap up for sure. But spoiler alert, Mad Honey was a five-star read for me. And Lisa read it too. We did a lot of co buying and co-reading this month, which is always fun. And then my net galley, uh, right, my net galley score is terrible. It's terrible. <laughs> but I, that doesn't stop me from requesting the ones that I'm pretty sure I'm going to get because they're just, they're not competitive, if that makes any sense. There are some that net galley says, do you want to request this? And you get approved based on your score and you get approved based on what you've read and reviewed for them before. 
I just got to that. And I need none of these. I need neither of these books, really, but they were intriguing to me. So the first one is called The Block Party by Jamie Day. Let me see if I can find out when this book comes out. July 18th, 2023 from St. Martin's Press. This is about a summer block party, which is why July is a serendipitous time for it to release a summer block party in a neighborhood that people probably are a little judgy about because, you know, it's like this great suburban place. And they are trying to figure out, they think it was an accident, you know, that that this per- person died and they're trying to figure out like what happened. And then it starts to look as though it is a murder. And so all the neighbors are like talking about it. Probably there are some suspects there. I don't want to know a whole lot about it, but it does sound like a great thriller. You can see I'm overloading with thrillers or horror these days, but I'm okay with that. And the next one actually comes out February 9th of this year. So it's a sooner than later read possibly for me so I can review it. It's called Love Me Fierce in Danger, The Life of James Elroy. And it's written by Stephen Powell. This book is nonfiction, and it is the story of James Elroy's life. This is a biography of James Elroy, who was a crime fiction writer back in the day. He was called the demon dog of crime fiction. But he also had quite a difficult life. His mother was murdered. The crime was never solved. And he was an alcoholic, I think, or an addict. And he just really struggled with coping with some of the things that had happened to him as he was growing up. And so this author, Stephen Powell, takes a look at his life, takes a look at his legacy of crime fiction, but also what kind of led to some of the choices he made in writing crime fiction and how maybe that haunted him a little bit as well. I did click and say, yes, I would like to read this. And I hope I could get to this in February. So we'll see if that's a possibility. I would really love for you to tell me if you have caught up on and improved your net galley galley scores, how did you do it? Like, what was your plan? Because I really feel like I need a plan. I need some kind of something that will stick for me, that will stop me when I buy or want to read a bright, shiny new object, like get back to the net galley. Like if I could read one a month, like I read or even two a month, I could really improve my score. Having said that, I have a readathon going on at the moment and I just hauled a bunch of books and I am certain I will be doing a February haul too because of things that have already happened, but not terribly large hauls. I have um, five physical books, which isn't bad. And three of those are as a result of getting a gift card in the Dirty Santa Win. I have a couple of audio books and I paused the Libro so I wouldn't get overly inundated with unread or unlistened to audio books. And then there's the Net Galley. So yeah, that's the one that I really need a plan to finish and I need to be diligent about it. So what if I read the ones that I hauled the next month after I hauled them and didn't haul anymore until I had read a certain number of them? I don't know. Something, something will happen. Okay. Thanks for joining me. Thanks for listening to that rant about that galley. Uh, if you purchased or acquired either any of these books, let me know if any of these are now on your radar as a result of me sharing them. Let me know that too. I'm really excited to look at a couple of these as potentials for my reading plans in February that are outside of the Mardi Gras readathon. February is going to be a hefty book reading month for me. And I also have to remember that I don't have to read all the books. I don't have to do all the things. I don't have to like you know, just, just only read. I have other things that I want to do this month and need to do this month. Let me know what you think. Let me know what you hauled. Let me know if you've read these in the comments below, like comment, share, if you would. Thanks for subscribing. Thanks for staying a subscriber. Thanks for your comments. And as always, happy reading. Bye. Mm -hmm.